We just need to change the values we want. So here's our lifter state. We right click, choose create constant, and just simply choose the next state. So let's take a step back and look at the code we just wrote. We have a cluster coming in, which is the lifter type def we created. We look at the state we're in, and depending on the state we're in, we execute one of the cases. If we're in the start case, we set a motor speed and we change the lifter state to be moving down, just like we see in the diagram here. And then it outputs. So we've finished coding up the start case. So now let's take a look at the next case. Let's program moving down. We notice that the case structure is automatically populated with the first two cases. So moving down is already here, but of course it's an empty case because we haven't given it any code yet. So what do we do inside the moving down case? Do we set the motor? Actually, no, we don't. All that we do in our moving down case is check the value of the lower limit switch. So how do we do that? Well, again, we have our type def here, with, which has access to all those device references. So let's pull out our lower limit switch device ref. And what we need to do here from our WPI robotics library is just read a digital input. We just need to do the get value because remember in the begin VI, we opened up the reference to this device. And here it is, here's our digital value. So if the value is true, we're going to go to the next case and we're going to set the motor speed. In order to do that kind of a logic, we need another case structure. So remember, there's no problem nesting case structures within case structures. So here, we're in the moving down case, we're reading the digital input state. If the state is false, we do nothing. That means the input cluster gets wired directly into the output cluster. If the value of that limit switch is true, then what does the code tell us to do? Well, two things. Set motor speed equal to zero and go to the next state. Well, we already wrote code for doing that, so let's steal it. Let's take this code, just do a control drag to move it to the bottom here, because we're probably going to use it several times. And drag it up into our true case. So we'll set the motor speed this time to zero. We'll again take our bundle by name, although I know we're going to need a little bit more room, so we'll do a control drag here to make some more space. Drag this guy in here. Again, wire up the middle terminal to our input cluster, wire the output to the output of the case structure, and go to the next case. So moving down takes us to wait for ball. And now we've programmed up our second case. The beauty of this architecture, especially in this example, is that the code in each case is actually very, very similar. So when we program our wait for ball case, let's actually duplicate our moving down case. By right-clicking on the top of our case structure, choosing duplicate case, we see that it's made a copy, it's taken moving down, made a copy of it, and given us exactly the same code inside. So we have the right code, but we need to hook it up to the right sensor. Remember, what's happening in the wait for ball case? It's checking the ball sensor to be true. So we've got it hooked up to the lower limit switch, so we need to choose our ball sensor instead. So hook that guy up. If our ball sensor is false, what are we doing? Nothing. We just pass the input cluster back to the output. But if the ball sensor is true, then well, let's look at our code. We're setting the delay end time, and we're going to the next step. So we actually don't need our motor set in this case. But we do need to go to the next stage, which is delay before raising. And we still need to do this highlighted code here. We need to set our delay end time equal to the current time plus one. Well, 
we made sure when we created this type def that we had all the internal parameters we needed. So here's our delay end time. Again, I'm just going to control drag to make a little bit more room. And let's add this code. So let's get the current time. So we right click, we can access that via real time, real time timing, tick count. The tick count is a VI which tells us the current timer of the Compact Rio device. And we can choose what units we want ticks, microseconds, or milliseconds. We don't need extreme accuracy, so we're going to choose milliseconds. And we're going to do an addition. Take our tick count, create a constant of 1000. Wire that into our output cluster. So now we've done one, two, three out of our five cases. Let's again duplicate our case. Now we're going to program the delay before raising case. So the code here tells us we're just checking the current time to be greater than or equal to the delay end time to go to the next state. Otherwise, do nothing. So we don't need our digital input, so we're going to delete that. What do we need? Well, we need to extract the delay end time. And we need to check the current time. So we're going to do that outside the case structure here. So there's our current tick time. We're going to do a comparison greater than or equal to. The input delay time. Again, make a little bit more room. You find as you program these, you start with a small case structure, but eventually expands to fit the largest of all your cases. So now, if this condition is true, if the current time is greater than or equal to the delay end time, the code that we're going to execute is actually to set the motor speed. So we're going to set the motor speed to go up, which is a positive 0.5. We need our motor device reference. And we just need to tell state machine what the next state is. So we go from here to moving up, and we can hide that now. And again, if the condition is false, do nothing. And the final state we need is the moving up state. And this moving up state, if we take a look at the code, it's very similar to the moving down state. It's basically waiting for the upper limit switch to be true. So let's pick the right state to duplicate. So we start with our moving down. We'll duplicate it. It's chosen moving up as the next case. Very good. Everything here is almost exactly what we need, except we need to make sure we read the upper limit switch in our DIO get. And if it's true, we're actually going to start moving down. So our speed will be minus 0.5, and our new state will be moving down. And if we delete this extra stuff which we've left behind, we see that we've got a VI that's ready to run. So depending on how you look at it, you may find that this code that we just created actually was pretty quick. As long as you have a very clear picture of what your state diagram is going to be, whether it's through a nice state diagram or whether it's just very clear in your head or whether it's clear on a piece of paper in front of you, as long as you're clear on what's happening in what order, what code is happening on transitions, and what checks are being performed within each state, it's very easy to generate this code. We save our code and return to the robot main for a second. Open up our teleop. And just review what's happening here. Every time that the robot main VI runs, the teleop VI will run. Remember we have a shift register here which holds the robot data so that loop after loop after loop, the same data is stored and passed back into the teleop VI. And because we're using that same robot data into the lifter sub VI, taking the input here, taking the output, and bundling it back into that control, all the data that we're going to keep track of within our lifter is going to be remembered from loop to loop to loop.